Neurons and glia are highly polarized cells that use unique pathways to control gene expression. In particular, this is evidenced by the complexity of protein-RNA interactions. And here I will be presenting a work where we show the importance of these interactions for disease and evolution. The work relies on a new method that we developed where we can identify the interactions between protein and RNA on a genome-wide level. We begin by cross-linking intact brain tissue with UV light, and this forms a covalent bond between proteins and RNA that are in direct contact. Afterwards, we lyse the tissue, purify the protein, and through unique protocol of uh, ligating RNA to our adapters, preparing cDNA library, and performing high-throughput sequencing, we can identify with nucleotide resolution the position where the protein has cross-linked to the RNA. We have recently done this work on two very important RNA binding proteins that are present in the nuclei of all cells. First, we studied HNRMPC, which is the core protein of HNRMP particles. These are particles that can actually be seen with electron microscopy studies if we purify RNA from the nuclei. On the other hand, we studied UTF-65, the first component that binds to the 3' splice site upstream of each axon and recruits the U2 SNRP, the component of spliceosome, and thereby initiates the splicing reaction. You can see on this diagram that binding of HNRPC, which is shown in blue bar graph, is dispersed, present across the whole gene. The structure of the CD55 gene is shown underneath, and you can show the position of axons as black bars, whereas intron is shown as the thin line. And the binding of UTF-65 is restricted to the positions just upstream of every axon. So the positioning of the two proteins is very distinct, indicating that our method can monitor in vivo interactions of proteins with RNA. Interestingly, we've seen that the binding of UTF-65 is regulated by HNRPC. So in the absence of HNRPC, you can see here in the two additional data sets that were isolated from HNRPC knockdown cells, we find certain positions in the gene that increase the binding of UTF-65. So at the bottom of this slide, we show the zoom in into this region where the control cells indicate very little binding of UTF-65, but the knockdown cells show a drastically increased binding of UTF-65. And this binding overlaps with the position where HNRPC normally binds. Interestingly, this axon that is here labeled in green is an alternative axon that is regulated by HNRPC. So this axon is only included when we remove HNRPC from the cells, indicating that the competition between these two proteins for the 3' splice site controls the inclusion of this alternative axon. This alternative axon derives from ALU elements. And you can see here that inclusion of axons that originate from ALU elements is a common phenomenon after removing HNRPC from the cells. On the left, we quantify the inclusion of these axons, and it can only be detected in the absence of HNMPC. So we have two separate siRNAs. We have knockdown 1 and knockdown 2, where we removed HNMPC. Under both conditions, we see strong inclusion of axons. But none of the other proteins that are also important regulators of splicing have any impact on inclusion of the axons from the ALU elements. These are just four examples. On the right, you can see the gel images where the isoforms, including the axons, are migrating slower on the gel. And uh, these isoforms can only be seen in the HRMPC knockdown. But these are not the only examples. We see over 1,000 cases where new axons are forming from the ALU elements in the genome.
So this is a very widespread phenomenon, and we can also monitor it by looking at the interactions of HNMPC and UTF-65 with the ALU elements. On the left, we can see heat map of HNMPC binding, as determined by the clip data, on ALU elements at the positions that mark the boundary between the intron and the beginning of the axons which emerge from the ALU elements. So the dotted line is the boundary between intron and ALU axon. And the binding of HNMPC is shown as the blue dots on the diagram. We show here over 700 axons that have emerged from ALU elements, and each of them has some evidence of HNMPC binding in the normal situation. But the control axons that are present downstream of the ALU elements have very little bit of HNMPC binding. On the other hand, in purple, we see binding of UTF-65. In control cells, we see very little UTF-65 binding on ALU elements and significant binding on control axons. But when we remove HNMPC from the cells, we see very strong increase of UTF-65 binding to ALU elements on specifically the axons that are regulated by HNMPC but we don't see this change on the control axons. So we see a general competition between these two factors that is specific for the axons regulated by HNMPC, which derive from ALU elements. And these types of axons are commonly a cause of human diseases. As you can see on the top of this diagram, the ALU elements that are forming axons are in orientation where they contain two stretches of uridines when they are incorporated into the RNA. And these uridines are the binding site of either HNRBC or UTF-65. Mutations within these tracts of uridines will change the competition between the two factors. And we see generally that deletions of these uridine tracts or changes in the ratios between uridine and cytosine will change the competition and uh, when HNMPC binding is decreased, new axons can form in disease. We have explored this in our recent publication, which has been published in Cell by Zarnak et al. And uh, here I just summarize our findings. On top, you can see that HNMPC binding to these uridine tracts in the ALU elements is able to repress UTF-65 binding, which maintains correctly spliced transcriptome, prevents inclusion of ALU axons, and thereby creates functional proteins. In the knockdown of HNRBC, UTF-65 starts binding to the ALU elements, which leads to formation of new axons, and thereby aberrant transcripts and non-functional proteins. In disease, mutations that change the uridine tracts will also be able to perturb binding of HNMPC to specific ALU elements, allow UTF-65 binding, and create specific axons which can lead to a variety of different diseases, depending on which gene has the mutation. But also in evolution, mutations that change the inclusion of ALU axons can be counterbalanced by additional mutations that change the reading frame of the axons and may contribute to new functionalities of proteins. And 5% of alternative axons in humans have derived from ALU axons, from ALU elements, indicating this is a very common phenomenon.